Yes, we're still tracking Idalia as it continues to the east. We've got all sorts of warnings on the map. The yellow representing a tropical storm warning and the green flash flood warnings and uh, just flood warnings on the uh, region across the region right now. Now you can see these boxes right here. That's indicating a flash flood warning, meaning that the water can rise very rapidly. And all these warnings right here, all are rivers that are uh, starting to overtake their banks. Now, a lot of reports of uh, severe weather, mainly down to the south and east around Orangeburg County. About every one of these points right here is some sort of uh, water on the roadway. Uh, in uh, areas of Santee, we've seen that as well. Uh, Orangeburg emergency manager reported several roads covered in with water in the city of Santee. We've seen it right here in Utahville with significant flooding in Utahville with Porcher Avenue Avenue closed and water in several businesses along Porcher Avenue. Now, the rain is starting to wrap up here in Columbia. We've got one little narrow band of heavy rain in uh, Kershaw County and also Lee County, seeing some of that uh, heavier downpour over in that region east of Manning. Some steady rain over there and Lee County. That you've got the heaviest rain so far, just in between Ashwood and Lamar, and over towards uh, Westville. Some heavier downpours uh, moving over to the east. So, how much have we seen so far? I put some fresh numbers on here, and it's showing like right around 7.2 inches in the area shaded in red. This is a radar estimate uh, 4.8 in southern. I got to 4.8 in southern areas of uh, Sumter County, about two to two and a half inches Richland and also Lexington counties and Kershaw counties about two inches, half inch to uh, three quarters of an inch in Newberry County. Now let's compare that to what's actually fallen. And this helps me a lot because look at Manning, 6.56, really close to that seven inch mark. So the radar is doing a decent job. Uh, that, that tells you something. 1.74 so far in Columbia, 1.86 around Lexington and 0.81 in Winsboro. Also, we're dealing with a chance of some storm surge. We've had some video uh, from Edisto, some of that uh, storm surge kind of coming in and uh, getting close to homes, uh, but around three feet of storm surge is still possible throughout the night tonight. Around Hilton Head, Charleston, we're also worried about the king tide with uh, that happening right now uh, this evening around 8 o'clock to 9 o'clock. And up the uh, up the shore, we're looking at about uh, just over a foot in areas of Georgetown and also in Horry County. So there's the storm surge. Let's talk about where this system has come from and where it's going and the latest on Edalia from meteorologist Eric Zernick. Yeah, so I'm going to do something cool. We're going to take a 24 hour look at where Edalia has been and where it is now. So yesterday evening at this time, Edalia was a category two hurricane with winds over 100 miles per hour. It actually continued to strengthen overnight into the early morning hours and briefly did become a major category four hurricane with winds near 130 miles per hour, eventually making landfall as a cat three just to the south of Perry. You can see to the south east of Tallahassee and just to the north of Cross City and Cedar Key region of the Big Bend portion of Florida with winds about 125 miles per hour as it came on shore and then just kind of wobbled its way through Georgia and then eventually made its way up into South Carolina where it's sitting right now just to the north of Charleston. Winds still up around 60 miles per hour. Still have some of those heavier showers across the PD region and with some lighter rain continuing to make its way into the Midlands. By first thing tomorrow morning, it should already be offshore. So we think as you're waking up tomorrow morning around 8 o'clock, now making its way to the northeast of Wilmington, North Carolina, just off the Outer Bay. Banks region still is a fairly strong tropical storm winds of 60 miles per hour and will continue to be a tropical storm all the way into the Labor Day weekend where it could make another landfall with Bermuda sometime late Sunday evening with winds near 50 miles per hour. So Edalia is going to continue to live on over the coming days as it makes its way out into the Atlantic. We're also tracking more storms to keep an eye on. So we got Hurricane Franklin. It's pushing off to the east and will continue the weekend as it gets over the cooler northern Atlantic waters. Tropical depression 
Depression 11 just continues to spin and be a storm for the fishes. In between those, we've got a 10% chance of development with this little wave. And then off the west coast of Africa, another system has a 70% chance of development. So for the rest of this evening, some lighter rain continues for another few hours, but eventually overnight, the rain makes its way off to the north and east. And overall, we're looking at drier conditions for tomorrow. And thanks to that northerly breeze, it's going to help to dry things out and bring in some drier air. So we are looking at some great conditions to really help the Palmetto State dry out after a very wet Wednesday. So for the rest of tonight, the rain pushing off to the east, still a little bit breezy and windy at times. Temperatures holding steady in those low 70s to upper 60s. Maybe a stray sprinkle as you're getting up, especially for far eastern areas. But overall, plenty of sunshine tomorrow. Temperatures aren't going to be overly that hot either. Only should make it into the low the mid 80s. So looking like a fairly nice Thursday. And then we'll continue to have the sunshine and looking good heading into the weekend. Temperatures low the mid 80s Saturday and Sunday. Upper 80s for your Labor Day Monday. And then getting back into the low 90s with more sunshine into much of next week.